Dr. Byer, as we have this conversation about boosters, it's no longer just about the third booster. Now it's about potentially a fourth. You're seeing Israel start to do that. What does the science tell you about whether or not that's really necessary? Well, the reason why there is so much enthusiasm for boosting is because we have seen that vaccine-induced immunity wanes over time. Uh, and uh, you get a tremendous reinvigoration of the immune response with boosting. So the Israelis just, just this week published their data on comparing people who had two doses of messenger RNA, they've used Pfizer, with people who had a third uh, boosting dose. So not a fourth, but the third. Uh, and that showed a 90% reduction in mortality. So that is just really significant and dramatic. The AstraZeneca data also is important because even though uh, many countries are not using it, and as you said, many use AstraZeneca early on, the fact is now, uh, and WHO has been working very carefully on this, many countries are going to have later doses that are different, either with now the, uh, the new protein subunit vaccine that's coming along um, or with mRNA. This is what happened in South Africa. They started with AstraZeneca, they mm -hmm. pivoted to J&J, now they're using mRNA. And that mix and okay. match boosting strategy also looks good and looks like it's protective. So that's very important. Okay, so that's the, 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 you know, the booster uh, and the rollout of it. Talking about how long immunity lasts then, uh, Dr. Byra, when we get a vaccine, is this unusual that the immunity lasts as, as little time as it seems to or fades as quickly as it seems to? Is it unusual and is there a chance that science moves on quite quickly to produce something that doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't wane quite so quickly? Well, this is the biology of coronaviruses, and this is why uh, with the coronavirus group A that caused the common cold, you have a cold, you don't get it again probably in that season, but you're vulnerable again the next year. And that's just how immunity to coronaviruses works. It wanes. So it, it isn't surprising, um, but what it means probably is that we're going to have to have more regular boosting uh, to keep that immunity up as long as this virus is still circulating. Uh, um, now, it is true, uh, as Tedros said, that the, the big challenge or a huge challenge that we face is that so much of the world still hasn't seen their first doses, and that we have to fix in 2022. It is looking likely that we'll have enough vaccine to immunize everybody and get that basic immunization done by May or June. And then it's going to be a logistical operational challenge to, to immunize the rest of the world in low-income countries. Mm. Thinking about the Omicron variant, how encouraged are you by what we've heard in these early studies, uh, Scottish study, English study, South African study, all on the same day pointing to lower hospitalization rates from Omicron, which given it spread so fast is, is, is a relief, but it still spreads so fast. So how comforted are you by that kind of data? Well, it is encouraging. And, uh, of course, we're always looking in science for things that are consistent. Since you have data from three quite different-looking populations suggesting the same uh, lower risk of hospitalization and severe disease, that's encouraging. Uh, the data from South Africa is the most compelling. Uh, that showed about a two-third reduction in hospitalization. But that's a population that had a very high rate of just having recovered from a very serious surgery of Delta. So there was a lot of pre-existing immunity in the population. Uh, we'll have to see how that looks in other populations. It's both the variant and the populations that it's circling in that you have to look at. Uh, what we're worried about here in the U.S. is, of course, that we have about 25% uh, of the population who are just not immunized at all. Um, mm. And many of those people have been relying on the idea of natural immunity, having recovered from COVID. But what we've seen with Omicron is that that is not working. It, part of the reason why it's so infectious is that it's able to infect people who've already had COVID and recovered, including with Delta. Dr. Byer, I, I'd like to draw on your experience as former president of the International AIDS Society. You know, many mm -hmm. people are pointing to South Africa as a precursor to improving conditions here in the U.S., certainly in the U.K. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, you know, we all know South Africa, it's got a preponderance of immunocompromised individuals. So how can you make that comparison? How can we think that we're going to go in the same path of a country that, you know, many people have had AIDS, many people have had the virus, those that haven't been boosted have probably had it already. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, it's a it's a complicated picture. I think one thing to remember is that South Africa, on average, is about 10 years younger than the U.S. and the U.K. It is a much younger population. And older age, as we all know, 
major cause of Omicron, uh, de of COVID uh, death and, and disease. Uh, but there is no question that South Africa has the world's largest HIV epidemic, one in five adults. When we looked at immunizing the healthcare workers, and that was a study that was done with Johnson & Johnson, we immunized half a million South African healthcare workers with J&J. &J. It proved to be robust protection against the Delta variant, uh, and 10% of that healthcare workforce is living with HIV. So wow. what we take away from that is that it is really important to prioritize people with immunocompromise for vaccination and for boosting. That's extremely important for people living with HIV. Also TB, which is also immunocompromising. South Africa has a huge TB problem. Uh, and uh, we have to do way better with, uh, I think, using our platforms, like our PEPFAR program that the U.S. supports AIDS treatment in Africa, as a vaccine platform to protect those people. That's really important.